Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our experts trainer will be discussing about Cuban Dispots and Multi-Container Bots. So let's get into the video. Now the third uh, basic component which is the basic building block of Kubernetes is the pod. So we have the worker node in which we have Docker and Kubelet running. And whenever we want to create any container that gets wrapped up by a component called as pod. And inside the pod actually the container runs. And my pod can be having one container running inside that or a pod can have multiple containers running inside that as well. So if you see pod is the atomic unit or the smallest unit on the Kubernetes platform. It can be a group of container or it can be a single container wrapped up in a pod. And there should be a use case for us to keep multiple containers inside a pod. If we go back to the theory of microservices, we would run a microservice inside a container and we want that to be independently developed, tested and deployed. If I'm clubbing too many things together and I'm saying, three, four, five containers would be running inside a pod, then understand because pod is the smallest unit which I can create, which I can build, which I can deploy in Kubernetes, all those five or six containers life cycle becomes tied up together. So unless and until we have a use case wherein two containers are so dependent that I can't separate them from each other, I'll not try to keep them together. If there is a very high requirement that I got to keep them together, then only we normally place multiple containers inside a pod. And in the container level, IP address was assigned to a container, but in Kubernetes, it changes. IP address is assigned to the pod and containers will use the port number. Like pod one will have an IP address, container one will be listening on a port on that IP address. Same here in the picture, if you see pod two, will have an IP address and container one and container two would be using ports on that IP address range. So port namespace would be shared across all the containers in the pod. Pod has an IP, container has a port in case of Kubernetes. So till now we have seen pods which have single container in it, but yes, we can have pods which can have multiple container residing or wrapped up by the same pod. And what would be the use cases? Like for example, I want to have several replicas of my Nginx pod. I would be deploying one one replica of the Nginx container wrapped up by a single pod. Rather than having five replicas of my Nginx container residing on the same pod. When we say multi-container pod, it's not that we are talking about the replicas. This is a bad design. Rather, we would have two different sorts of containers. Like one is a Nginx container. Another is a container which is helping us populate the Nginx web servers, uh, the entire static database, uh, the static web server page you can think of. So one is writing to the volume, the Nginx web server is reading from the volume and showcasing that uh, entire data which the which is residing in the volume as a web server's web page over here. So when we talk or when we say that we have multiple containers in the same pod, they are not same containers. They are entirely different applications. They would be two different sorts of applications which are bound to sit together. And if we don't, don't keep them together, then they would have some uh, like effects. They would not work properly, could be a possibility. So let's understand when we design a pod and there are multiple processes or we had discussed about microservices that form a cohesive unit together. They got to sit together, otherwise they would not work. In those cases, we have some limitations like uh, they are the ones, those who have to uh, share some resource, they are the one who should have dependencies, they can't communicate with each other if they are sitting far apart. Because when we are talking about pods, 
having one container each, you can't guarantee that the pods would reside in the same server or they would reside in the same region or the zone. They can be distributed across anywhere in the cluster. There could be a possibility that my application has a limitation with the latency in the network or any sort of uh, limitation like both the microservices got to have the same IP address. So pod has an IP, containers have port. If two different containers got to have the same IP, I got to wrap them by the same pod. When we say pod, that automatically means that we are talking about co-located, co-scheduled uh, containers and whatever happens, they would be scheduled or they would be located on the same server or the virtual machine or the host. When we are uh, thinking about creating them, when we are talking about terminating them, it's all been done together. The life cycle get tied up together. They come up together, they work together, they die together. And because they are sitting together, they are so tightly coupled as a single unit. And when we say pod, we have discussed that pod is the smallest deployable, creatable, destroyable unit in case of Kubernetes. So when I have two containers or more than that sitting inside the same pod, they have the complete life cycle tied up together. So here, if you look into this example, there is a file puller type of application which has a capability of populating the data which the web server can showcase. And consumers are there, those who are actually using the web server's content or those who are actually visiting those web servers. So one guy is populating the data, other guy is actually reading or showcasing that data. So in a pod, I can have a volume. The volume can be mounted inside both the containers. One is writing to that volume, one is reading from that volume. And when we say this volume, it's that the PV and PVC, which we have discussed about. So this is all about the multi-container pod. Now, there are different types of use cases in which you can keep multiple containers inside a pod. And that is the reason we have different sort of patterns. So we will discuss the patterns one by one. Uh, when we say multi-container, that itself says that it's a pattern and in that you can segregate different different sorts of pattern as well. So when we are talking about multiple containers, instead of that, if I would have multiple processes running in the same container, one container having multiple process, what would have been the drawback? The drawback would have been that it is really difficult to troubleshoot. One process leads to the destruction or uh, trouble, troubling the other process would have happened. Now, because containers have isolation and I keep them separate inside two different containers, troubleshooting becomes easier for me. Even though I have that pod limitation many a times inside the pod, we can just restart the containers as well. That liberty we have. But if two processes are sitting inside the same container, it becomes very difficult to manage their entire life cycle and debug the issue. So when we thought of making multi-container pod, we understood that they are tightly coupled applications, which got to get co-located or managed together but we don't want to tie the entire process to each other. We want a level of isolation. And that is the reason we came up with different sorts of patterns. Like the sidecar type of pattern is called when a pod is helping the other pod to do something. Like we understood that one is populating the data, other is showcasing that data. That is like a sidecar type of pattern. Another pattern is an adapter type of pattern where one is actually uh, simplifying the output, whatever we have from the actual application so that it can be understood by a third party application. And if I have 10 applications, say app one, app two, app three, everyone is giving an entire different format of data. Then the third party application to do the matrices analysis or to do the 
any sort of analysis becomes difficult. So this adapter type of container, what it does, it takes the data and makes it in a format in which the third party application is ex expecting. So this helps us adapt to a, uh, I would say adaptability increases for that application. So that is the reason it is called as adapter type of uh, container or, or adapter type of pattern, sorry. And the third one is ambassador type in which the main application doesn't have the other applications talking to it directly. Rather, the ambassador container would be proxying the data outside or proxying the connections for it. So you don't connect directly to your main app, rather you connect to a uh, ambassador container which proxies the stuff to us. So this is few uh, or the different sorts of multi-container pattern. We will deep dive into each type of pattern and try and understand what each of the pattern gives us the advantages we have and when to think that it is a sidecar type of application, these two applications I'll implement it as a sidecar pattern or these sort of applications I got to implement as an adapter pattern or an ambassador pattern. We got to understand that then only you can go ahead and design your application switch. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you missed upon any concepts or if you want to dive deeper, then we have something really, really special for you. We have our free class on Docker and Kubernetes certification to get you higher paying jobs. And in this interactive session, we'll be learning about why learn containers, that is Docker's and Kubernetes. You'll be learning about the whole Docker container architecture. We'll be getting to know about some hands-on demo. You'll be getting to know the certifications regarding Kubernetes, CKA, CKS, and CKAD. And we do have Q&As along with a limited time gift. So if you want to enroll for this free class, all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash k8s02. And after that, you just have to click on book your free seat now. And after that, you just have to select an event date according to your availability, add your name, your email address, your phone number, and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of URL. You can add this URL to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, take care and keep learning.